I am valuable to him, how do I walk differently? You know, it's not how do I make this effort, how do I make this effort to walk better, but the question is, does God equip us in such a way that we can walk differently? And I'm calling that worthy walking. Um, you heard me last year say things like kingdom walking. Worthy walking is saying, well, God has made me special now. You know, when, when um, we were um, in a Bible study last night, we were talking about John chapter 3, and Nicodemus says, well, you know, like, how's this all work, Jesus? He sort of sneaks there even. He's like, oh, better not let anybody see me. But how's this all work? And Jesus says, well, you must be born again. And, and part of what we were trying to get to last year, and I hope many of you got there, was, hey, if God deems me valuable enough, and then if I believe in Jesus Christ, then I'm sort of born anew. And, and I become, in, in this reborn, this rebirth, I become a son or a daughter of God, of the Father. And, and what's important about that is that if we are the sons and daughters of the King, if we are the sons and daughters of the Father, then we are given these privileges. You see, he says, well, if you are who I say you are, if you recognize that, you must realize how much I love you, how much I care about you, how much I want to protect you, right? And, and so, I, you know, I think about it in this way, and, and, and for, I don't think men do it as much as women, but I do think men do it at times. But if you tell a young woman, you're, I'm going to treat you like a princess. They're going to go, oh, that's wonderful. You know, I, I do want to be like, like some Disney princess where everything is, is so magical, right, and so wonderful, and, and everything is so perfect. And, 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 and so, but if we are the sons and the daughters of the king, are we not then the prince and princesses of the king? And do we not, and are we not, conferred those special properties of what it would mean to be a prince or a princess? And, and how wonderful should we feel that God has said, I am going to give you this opportunity, I am going to give you this possibility to restart your life in such a way where you have all the privileges of being a son and daughter of God. And so tonight, I started to ask the question, and I'm asking you to think through it together. We're going to do this for the next four RISE services. What does it mean to walk worthy? How do we worthy walk with God? And, and so in Ephesians chapter 4, I believe Paul gives us that understanding. For tonight... We're going to talk about a very difficult subject, walking in unity. The church of God, our church, since 1878, I believe, has said that the most important things that we believe in is holiness and unity. Holiness and unity. And Paul, in his writing here, suggests that unity is one of those ways that we can walk worthy. Okay, so let's read in Ephesians chapter 4. Let's just get started in it a little bit. It says, verse, this is verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. One thing that's interesting about Paul is he recognizes that him being a prince, or in his case, a prince, or as in a female's case, the princess of God, that there are responsibilities for that. God forgave you of things that you didn't think you could be forgiven of. Right? There's things, perhaps, and maybe I'm wrong, 
But there's probably someone sitting here tonight that God has forgiven them, and they haven't forgiven themselves. And so there is this um, understanding to Paul that, that I am so indebted to God that I am like his prisoner. Now, he's writing from jail when he writes this. So he knows what it means to be a prisoner. He knows that, that, he, that he, has, he does not have the control to go wherever he wants as a prisoner, right? You know, like there was a thing in the, in the 1700s, it was called an indentured servant in the United States. And I think that went through for a period of time. I'm not a historian, but I do know that that was a case. And what it was is that if you got too much debt, you basically went and worked for the person until you worked at all. Um, our, our debt, how we do debt today is slightly different. But Paul recognizes that his debt to Jesus Christ for all that he has done. You remember, Paul is the man that was running around persecuting Christians when he was Saul. Paul was the man that held the coats when they stoned Stephen. And so he's having, I believe at least, there's some indication that he has struggled forgiving himself. But yet he says, well, if, he, if God did that all for me, if Jesus did that all for me, then I should at least walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. And when we say calling, what we are talking about is the salvation and the blessings of God. So, so what Paul is saying, do you believe it was the greatest gift that you could ever get that Jesus came down to this earth and that Jesus said, if you believe in me, I will give you, I will transform your life in such a way that you can inherit eternal life both in the future, and you can walk in the kingdom now, right? Similar to our um, studies uh, before Christmas, which was the, the prodigal son coming back to the father after doing horrible things, basically indicating to his father that I don't care when you die, just give me your money. And yet the father forgave him when he came back. And, and in that, we should know that we are in debt to God for what he is willing to do for us. And so Paul recognizes that and says that, hey, if you understand how great a gift your salvation is, then you should want to do whatever God has purposed you to do. It goes on and says, and he gives us some, um, for lack of a better term, attributes of a person that is worthy walking. Let me name a couple of those for you. It says in verse 2, with all lowliness and gentleness. Are we humble enough? You know, and, and what, does, what does humble mean? It goes on to say, you know, with long suffering and bearing with another in love. You know, are we patient enough with people? Are we humble enough with people? Do we love like God loved us? Paul was saying, if you're going to worthy walk, then you're going to have to be, have these attributes. Now, where do we get those attributes from? Does anybody, does that sound familiar to any other scripture that we would read? Maybe perhaps in Galatians? The fruits of the Spirit, right, are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, right? So, so Paul's not saying that you always have to be patient by yourself. Because if that was the case, don't raise your hand, but is there anybody here that can be patient all the time without God's help? Right? Is there any of us that can love like God loves? You know, you think about this, and, and, 
And, and, and Jesus tells us, he says, look, if you cannot forgive your brother, and I mean, obviously when he says brother, it also means sister, and it also doesn't mean relations. It means anybody. If you can't forgive that person, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, put your offering on the altar and walk away and get that fixed. Because you can't carry God's love inside of you and be a person that has unforgiveness in your heart. Right? And so, when we talk about these long-suffering, when, we, when we're talking about this love, Paul's not saying that you've got to work your tail off to do this. He's saying you have to surrender to God. If you were going up the mountains of, like Mount Everest, there is nobody that goes by themselves. You need somebody to help you. There, there's things that has to happen. They have to build base camps and they have to build anchor spots. God is that guide for us. God has sent the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can worthy walk. And so let's not make tonight the start of a beat down on your part that says, You've got to do the worthy walking. I'm saying when we surrender and we say we're going to follow Jesus and we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, we will worthy walk. Now, what's this got to do with unity? Unity, um, in, in, in the definition I'm going to use tonight, is like singing in harmony. You ever had two or three people singing and one of them is not singing in harmony what's that like you want to cover your ears up you're sort of embarrassed a little bit it's not as pleasing right but you get a group of people a quartet or a group of people singing that's in harmony and it like almost just like lifts your your spirits up because it's so beautiful right see Unity is talking about how we harmonize together. Now, how is that possible? You know, sometimes we're even more diverse than we are tonight, but I guarantee if we look around right now, there are so many different narratives, so many different people in this pew right now, in these pews right now. To the point where, in reality, can we harmonize if it isn't something greater than us? Right? I mean, Jeanette, my wife, has a different story than anybody else here. Don has a different story. Even Vela has a different story. You know, each of us, has a different story yet we can be harmonized together and, and Paul writes he says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and so I, I think what he's trying to say is what's endeavor mean to strive for to to protect perhaps um, when we are harmonizing together how do we harmonize how if, if we're so different in some ways, each of us have different desires and needs and, and stories, how do we then become in harmony? Well, in music, you could have, uh, and you music people don't laugh at me if I make mistakes here, but you could have a soprano and an and a alto and a tenor and a bass all singing different parts of music, and it perfectly harmonize together in unity and when it's done right each of those parts though they are different work together to make something really special that's what a church is it's not that we're all alike it's not that we all have it all figured out the, exactly how we should do everything it's that God can take a soprano and a bass, and he can harmonize them together 
so that they can make this beautiful music of God. You see, when we walk worthy, when we're worthy walkers, part of it is, is that there is this music that comes out of us. There is this worship that comes out of us. There is this joy that comes out of us that goes toward the purpose of God. We as a church, our purpose is to show the glory of God because he has glorified us. And so our worthy walking is just another way for us to point to the greatness of God. And when we're harmonized together, we do that. And, and the other part of this harmony is that it eliminates something that we all struggle with. From, from Vela to Robin, every one of us struggle with it. What is it? Selfishness. To be self-centered is, is to be human. I actually believe to a certain extent our nature must have been self-centered so that we would survive. It's that survival instinct. If it comes down to me or Bryna, but it, there was a time in, in when it was a rougher time that discussions were being had, right? So the, the, the survival instinct, the nature of humans is to at some point say, I am going to be selfish. I'm going to worry about, I'm going to center on myself, whether I get enough food, whether I have the resources, whether I've got the heat, and then if I get all that, maybe I help somebody else out too, right? But what the harmony does in unity and why it is so worthy to talk about is that what it says is, is I'm not going to be self-centered. I'm going to be other-centered and I'm going to be God-centered. And when we're God-centered and other-centered, that's when the harmony starts to happen. The other part of the harmony is, is that if you have Jesus Christ in your life, and you have Jesus Christ in your life, what Paul writes in verse 4, he says, there's one body and one spirit and one hope and one Lord and one faith and one baptism and one Father. If we are worthy because of those things, then we all have exactly the same thing. No matter how, how, how um, rich you are or how poor you are, no matter how healthy you are, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, if you have Jesus Christ in your life, you have exactly the same thing, the same gifts, the same, the same um, deeming of being valuable as me, as anyone. Never think as a pastor that for some reason God values me more than he values you. Sometimes it feels like he values me less in some way. But I will tell you, he doesn't. I will tell you, with all my heart and soul, I know this, that because we only, there is only one body, that there is only one soul, that our spirit, there is only one baptism, that we are united together in the oneness. If, if you know nothing else about Christianity, it is not a solo adventure. It is not an adventure where you are striking out on your own, trying to figure it out. Because if that's what you think Christianity is, then the whole Bible argues against that. In fact, at the very end, everybody is gathered together to celebrate the marriage between Jesus and the bride of Christ. So if you want to be a solo artist, if you want to be somebody that, that is traveling on your own, then realize when you get to heaven, you're going to be very disappointed because we're not going to be there by ourselves. We are all going to be united together, worshiping joyfully 
our Lord and Savior, our Father. And, and so when we talk about worthy walking and unity, what we're talking about is, is that there is not one, but there is this oneness through us all. And when we get that right, we then start to find how God blesses us in such a way that we can do great things for Him. You see, when we start walking in unity, what we're really saying is, is that because God val values you, I value you. And because I value you, I am going to do things like God and so when we start to talk through this series when we go through this series and we say okay well what does it mean that if God values us and we're walking worthy what is it going to look like well the one thing it should look like is is that we should be all together and the more we get together the more that we are harmonized the more that God will bless purposes of this church rise service will get stronger as we harmonize together he finally says in verse 3 and I find this interesting because I never heard this definition for peace but he says that we we keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace now, the Greek word for peace is different than what I would think peace is. I mean, most of you would say peace, you would be thinking of like a peace treaty, right? You know, um, we're no longer going to fight, right? I mean, that's one of the definitions I think most of us would come with, up with if we said peace. But the Greek word for peace is more about being joined together. When we, are, when we accept Jesus into our lives, we have peace with God. And we are joined with Him. And if there are others that have peace with God, be, because they have a, their peace with Him, they are joined with Him, then we, when we gather together, that unity means that we should have peace with each other. And a church should be a place where peace is happening all the time and, and as we continue to look at what it means to walk worthy of the calling we must recognize that because we are joined together by Christ by the Holy Spirit that we can do great things if we allow ourselves to see that we are joined together by Him. It means something to me, I hope it means something to you, to be joined together in unity, to walk in unity. And if you see the picture that we have up there, the one thing I liked about the picture when I, looked, when I saw it Notice that they're not all the same. They're not the same age. They're you're not the same body types. They're all looking at the cross. Notice how they are all glorifying the cross. They recognize that Christ and what he's done for them, notice that they seem unified in what they're doing. And I, and, and I ask you for 2019, to start to think about, well, if I am so valued by God, then I am going to walk worthy in that. I am going to do whatever it takes to be all in on walking worthy with Him. And God will then start to strengthen your faith. God will start to strengthen your resolve. God will start to gift you in different ways, start to bless you, start to bless others. And then things will start to happen in this church that we only wish would happen. Because God will energize us 
into what he wants us to be as we walk worthy of him. I told you I had a short message tonight, not very long. Um, why don't we stand and I'll um, pray for you as we go get something to eat. Um,